As many of you may know, the Boston construction industry was suddenly halted in mid-March to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Since mid-May, job sites have reopened and people have resumed work. Here with us today is Scott Palmer, Executive Officer of the Builders and Remodelers Association of Greater Boston. Scott is here to discuss the future of the Boston construction industry, as well as what Bragby has been doing for their members and the industry as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Vinny Bada, Witham's partner and team leader of Massachusetts Construction Services. Thank you, Alana. And Scott, thank you for joining us today. Um, and I, I actually want to start off with what Alana was just mentioning in regards to Boston being the first city to shut down construction sites to try and stop that spread of COVID-19. How do you think this closure affected the job sites and affected these construction companies? Well, first off, uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to to be here today. Uh, Alana, thanks for arranging it. And Vinny, um, always good to see you, whether it's virtual or not. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the mayor uh, and the governor were um, putting you know business down, stopping business uh, early on when this all started, which was the right thing to do. And it's showing that to this day that we have some of the lowest, uh, you know, in declining rates in the country, uh, while everything's sort of still spiraling out of control in, the, in other parts of the country. So what they have done and continue to do is the right thing. Um, when, uh, when that all happened, as far as uh, stopping construction work in, in, um, in the city of Boston, uh, our um, Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Massachusetts leadership, including elements of Bragby and, and our state lobbyists worked very hard uh, to convince Governor Baker to deem residential housing and the residential construction and remodeling as an essential uh, service. Uh, and they did, they said that uh, it needed to be done. So a lot of our member contractors continue with jobs in some capacity uh, except in the city of Boston, where it largely um, was just stopped because of the, um, I guess the, the mayor sort of uh, exerted his influence in the city. Um, however, there were a lot of companies that just willfully shut down um, and had client or had clients asked them to do so. So, most of all residential construction um, moved out of city. There was some very essential stuff that was still going on, uh, but really it, it came to a, a, a grinding halt. Um, many companies were able to shift to other uh, safer job sites in the suburbs. Other companies just simply halted operations until the governor officially, along with the mayor's blessing, uh, officially reopened things. Uh, so there's, you know, big sigh of relief that, you know, people were allowed to get back to work in the city of Boston. And I think Cambridge was pretty much the same way. And now, as you are correct, our, our numbers are looking much better right now. So as these companies begin to reopen, these job sites begin to reopen, we're officially in the second half of 2020. Um, what do you see for this second half of 2020 and probably going into 2021 for these companies? Yeah, um, there's a lot of work going on and, um, within the new normal. Um, you know, it's, it's ironic that in the 2008-2009 housing uh, crisis that construction, home house building, construction remodeling was one of the more heavily hit of the vertical industries. This time around, it's one of the ones that continues to, to operate in some fashion. Um, a lot of builders uh, hardly had a hiccup. Uh, it all depended on what type of uh, work they were doing and where they were doing it. Uh, so we've, I've seen everything, every, you know, guys, as I said, business as usual, other guys have had to shift focus from some of the city work, the suburban work, and other guys just voluntarily decided they were gonna uh, stop all operations until uh, things were safe to go um, back to normal. So there wasn't any you know, tried and true method. Everybody kind of did what they could do or what they chose to do. Um, homeowners still remain very cautious about their interior remodeling uh, work. Um, so you know they're they're allowing any kind of out, out, outdoor work uh and there's and they're doing a lot of it i mean the suppliers are busy they're selling stuff workers are busy and i think it's because folks haven't been able to do anything else so it's kind of looking at their house and saying gee you know i better get it painted i you know i have money i got the, i got my money from the government and let's do something to the house so there's a lot of it um 
improvement, landscaping improvement, you know, uh, exterior improvements, small, smaller, separate interior jobs are being done. Uh, so there, there are, you know, a lot of work is still going on. Everyone out there though is, is practicing, you know, exposure prevention protocols. Uh, the masks are, you know, mandatory, the distancing, the washing stations, uh, cleaner on-site facilities, you know, they have to bring their, their you know, uh, Johnny on the spot kind of thing, and they, they have them more routinely checked out, all those things, uh, sanitizing the workspace. I was um, participated in a survey by Cox Media Group, the nationwide survey, which was, was pretty interesting, and they uh, had a little section on the, the home improvement industry, and, and, and of their respondents, a very small percentage were still were um, comfortable at all with any kind of a home improvement person coming into the house. Uh, they had a much better comfort level with people going outside the house. But um, huge percentage is, you know, masks. Uh, I think that's pretty much universal. Uh, the next, you know, big item on the, on everyone thing was doing was sanitizing uh, the workspace in the morning. I mean, when leaving the job site, uh, all wearing all protective gear. Um, you know, even even to the point of when they're inside, at least, even wearing a uh, a Tyvek suit of some kind, uh, with along with the mask and with the gloves. So, you know, they're it it's an, for the time being. This is how you have to do business. Um, yeah, it's certainly a different world. I completely agree. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about your organizations. Talk about Bragby. Um, what have you guys been up to the past few weeks? The past few months? <laughs> Well, um, I don't have to wear ties often, so that's a good thing. Um, obviously, we've been impacted, and we're like every trade organization in the country. We're we're a membership slash event focused organization, uh, and when the uh, money gets tight, um, certainly you you have members who say, "I'm going to hold off on that membership right now." You know that $700 a year. I'm going to just you know wait a few months, and so we're seeing that. Um, not not a huge amount of companies are doing that, but it, but enough to you know give us concern. Um, but we, what we really uh, suffer is that you know normally we have one or two in-person events a month, and we haven't been able to have that. Uh, so we've canceled all our indoor events pretty much through the end of this year, and looking at next year is not being very viable either. I just don't see normal numbers of people showing up uh face to face for for quite a while um and then we're still evalu evaluating what to do with our our fall outdoor events um, we have increased our, our our webinar schedule um you know i think we did uh we, we did one with uh, with you guys uh and we're um you know we're sharing general information events and also in increasing our online education events one, one final question i had scott um what what advice would you give to these construction companies uh, who are experiencing this disruption? Um, have experienced it, may experience it, even if we have future shutdowns, depending on what goes on. What advice would you give to them? Uh, I mean, th there are many companies, who, one reason or another, are struggling right now. You know, they, they're, they're alluded to before. There are many reasons. You know, sometimes it's because of the specific type of uh, uh, you know building or construction they do, uh, you know, or whether their workers um, have determined that they don't want to face the risk of going on a job site, but, you know, who knows what it is. Um, we do our best to provide as much information, some of which uh, with them has provided about a things company can do to mitigate the negative impact um, on the business and on the finances uh, during this time. So, you know, it's doing our best to inform and, and, and giving, you know, um, uh, as much information to our, our builder members as possible. Um, I've actually had calls coming from some of our members, uh, you know, uh, you know, I got a bad, you know, I'm in a bad predicament, something like this. I, you know, I don't have any work. So I do my best to um, put them in touch with others who, um, you know, we have, we have, a lot of members that are just more than willing to help, uh, you know, their fellows in the field uh, and with their business needs. So just to get together and talk about strategies or tactics. Uh, so you know, I do a little um, um, networking, if you will, to get those guys together. 
And so our members are always willing to help one another. And truly that's the purpose of a trade group such as Bragby to, to improve uh, the industry and improve the lives of our members as much as we can. Um, you know, members can create new opportunities in this new normal. Uh, you know, I've seen, I know of companies that have, have developed a whole, you know, new, new line of business just to, uh, in, in, in uh, prevention protocols. Uh, setting up, setting up, you know, uh, divider walls and things like that. I mean, it's, there's opportunities out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm always available, uh, and we're always here to help uh, our members. They can just get in contact with us, and, and we'll we'll reach out and do what we can to um, support them them in their business. Great advice, Scott. Thank you. And uh, again, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, the information you provide is always insightful to what's going on in the construction industry. I look forward to seeing you face to face again, hopefully soon. But in the meantime, stay safe and thank you.